Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Please don't FOMO in people, most likely Moon, meaning Carl Moon has already bought in and he's trying to pump his bags. This is the kind of crap the SEC needs to protect investors from. This coming from Wheezy and Nerd Nation Unboxed. And he's talking about the recent Pepe coin pump. Now, I have not been covering this for, um, should be obvious reasons, I guess. I mean, here it is, Pepe coin, and as you guys can see, it has uh, actually done quite well. But, I guess I should mention this is the hourly chart, but... What I was going to say was, it's only done well if you guys bought low in and around here, or here. And it was talking about Pepe coin back on April the 21st or the 22nd. I dare you guys to go back, find me a video of somebody telling you to buy into Pepe coin in and around here, or even in and around here, April 26th or 27th. If you can find me a video of somebody telling you to buy into Pepe coin on those particular dates, posted on those dates, then I would suggest you follow them because they clearly knew what they were talking about. Anybody who's talking about buying Pepe coin now is obviously doing exactly what uh, Wheezy is suggesting here, likely trying to get the coin to pump uh, so that they can dump their bags on you. Now, just taking a look at this from a technical perspective, throwing a Fibonacci on here, you guys can see uh, it's already reached the top. It's already reached the 4.236, did retrace down to the 2.618 and has actually gone to make higher highs. Reminds me very much of Binance coin uh, during the last bull run. But I mean, this is nowhere near as fundamentally sound as Binance coin and even Binance coin, uh, some would suggest is a sketchy cryptocurrency. Uh, I mean, at least there's a utility for it on the Binance exchange. Nevertheless, I'm not going to go into the fundamentals of that. I'm just hoping you guys are playing it safe. And, uh, you know, if you did buy Pepe coin, take your gains while they're still there. We've got most of the cryptocurrency market, though, uh, not really moving too much. This is XRP on the hourly uh, and XRP right now trading at 46 cents. So not really, uh, you can see just a lot of sideways chopping here, uh, you know, since that same period in and around the end of April. So we really haven't seen too much uh, in terms of XRP movement. Let me throw this on the daily. Uh, you guys can see we're just, you know, still trying to get out of this trend here. I mean, this is bear market territory. We are starting to move up. Bitcoin is definitely the one to watch, uh, you know, at this point, because the trend is looking healthy coming out of that bear market bottom back in November of 2022. So, uh, you know, for Bitcoin, we have made some new highs. Uh, Bitcoin is up 84.9% since the bottom of the market. Guys, we are looking bullish, but this is happening slowly. Uh, right now, Bitcoin price is hovering in and around 29.2. So 29,001, 29,002, give or take. And I know, I know this kind of thing looks fun. It's all fun and games. Uh, Pepe coin, I mean, you know, throw it back on the hourly here. It's all fun and games. Uh, and again, if you can find me videos, you know, of somebody posting to tell you to buy Pepe, because there's going to be tons of people telling you to buy Pepe today when it's already gone up. How much has it gone up since this bottom here? It's gone up almost 900%. So, you know, we saw a lot of coins in the bull run, last bull run rallying, roughly the same amount. So again, I'm telling you, if somebody did make a video about this back in late April, I'd be interested to see in what some of their other predictions are. Although I do think you'd be hard pressed to find somebody who posted about Pepe coin back then. The institutional adoption of digital assets is really where the money's going to be. Nicola3 here on Twitter posted this, okay, from May 3rd, 2023. So this is from a couple of days ago, an institutional gathering. Some of the biggest names all met in California to discuss institutional adoption of digital assets. The Ripple SEC lawsuit, he's stating, was a stage plan from the beginning. Why would a company doing something so criminal be at all the institutional events? Now, he posted this video. This video was circulating around. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think this was uh, directly from Nicola 3. I think he did borrow this video, so I don't know where the original credit should go. Bill Morgan was also commenting on this. I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Don't agree that the Ripple SEC lawsuit was staged, but Ripple is a significant player and will be instrumental in institutional adoption of digital assets, including XRP, if the lawsuit ever ends. I think he's being a little facetious there because we do know the lawsuit will eventually end, eventually. Um, but bringing this up, okay, Digital Assets Week, the event for institutional grade crypto, and why did that change over anyway? doesn't matter. The, inst the event for institutional grade crypto and digital asset solutions, okay? So that is the big part here. Oh, you can grab the screen and drag it that way and drag it this way. That's an interesting... A uh, little change here. Okay, this series focused on continuing realization of digital assets across the finance ecosystem. So guys, the big two words here, institutional grade. That is not for retail. That is for big money. That is for the big players. That is for real world utility. That's where the big money is going to flow. 
institutional grade is going to make this $1.19 trillion market cap look like chump change in a few years. And this is why we need the regulation. The regulation is going to bring in the big players, the institutional adoption. And this is when we're going to see these prices really pump because I mean, for all intents and purposes, as I mentioned in a video I did a few weeks ago, some are predicting that we could see a market cap of $250 trillion for cryptocurrency. And I mean, we would get there over the next decade. But in the meantime, you know, a 20, $50 trillion market cap, that uh, does not seem unreasonable within the next few years. Once we do get clear regulation and once institutions really start buying these cryptocurrencies, these true value coins that are going to, uh, you know, really make a difference for not just the face of finance, but, uh, you know, for all things, the internet of value, all things that are going to be handled on the blockchain. So, uh, you know, you got to think the market cap goes up even 20x. Think of some of these coins where the prices could go. You know, even if you just multiply, uh, you know, any of these prices you see today by 20x, that's a very rudimentary way of looking at price. Nevertheless, you can get an idea of where prices could go. Not only that, let's not forget, uh, you know, the 23,000 plus cryptocurrencies that currently exist. Uh, that number is going to shrink significantly once there is clear regulation and once, uh, you know, we do see this institutional grade money really kind of pour in to the real digital assets, the real ones focused on real world utility and, uh, you know, ignoring the Pepe coins of the world. So the interesting point about this is who was attending, okay? Some of the speakers that were attending this Digital Assets Week include Caroline D. Pham, okay, Washington Commissioner of the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, and none other than Chris Larson, co-founder and executive chairman at Ripple. And you can see they are the first two up here, guys, side by side, right at the top. Uh, you know, there's a slew of people here that are, that are uh, you know, speaking at this Digital Assets Week. And, uh, you know, a lot of these guys I've never heard of. Of course, though, you have some of the big guys right at the top, uh, one of them including Chris Larson. And even just looking at some of the partnerships that are uh, sponsoring this event, uh, if you just go down here, oh yeah, just pass this video to Chris Larson under testimonials. So Chris Larson here, front and center, uh, you know, all over this website. But even just look down here, okay, guys, some of the sponsors include Ripple and many Ripple partners. Not only that, some big banks as well. Okay, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan. We got TD Bank, Deutsche Bank, Goldman Sachs, UBS. Uh, we've got BlackRock down here, City Ventures, and then some other big partners like MasterCard and Visa as well. Uh, I couldn't help but notice that SVB Silicon Valley Bank is also listed here along with Celsius. So uh, maybe this is a bit of an older list. Uh, nevertheless, some Ripple partners, Securitize, PolySign, uh, Morgan Stanley is another big bank. So guys, it's a pretty big event. And, uh, you know, the SEC lawsuit, just kind of part of the crap that we have to wade through before we get to the meat and potatoes. Anyway, wanted to thank Bill Morgan here and Nicola3 for just posting that. Mr. Man here also mentioning how important some of these Ripple connections are. Did you know some of the Ripple team members include the SEC and the NSA. Okay, take a look at this document from 2018 before they were even sued. Some of the regulators, the team members, include the Federal Reserve, the SEC, and the NSA. So Ripple has very, very deep ties with, uh, you know, a lot of these organizations, uh, you know, some more important ones in the United States. Another thing I wanted to mention that I have mentioned in videos in the past are, uh, you know, some of these banking connections. This one in particular, the one from Goldman Sachs, engaging with digital assets and blockchains globally. Uh, and just to kind of reiterate here, Ripple is, uh, you know, front and center in some of these reports. And I know these reports are dating back from a little while. Nevertheless, it is good to reiterate that although we are seeing the Ripple SEC lawsuit, we are also seeing some interesting moves happening. Speakers like Chris Larson, obviously front and center, alongside Caroline D. Pham at Digital Assets Week in California. Uh, not to mention, guys, from the Wrath of Kahneman, Ripple user ABA Bank in Cambodia has signed an MOU with the government to develop a digital economy and fintech. So, you know, these other countries around the world continue to forge these partnerships. The Ministry of Economic and Finance in Canada headquartered ABA Bank signed a memorandum of understanding today to collaborate within the framework of digital economy and financial technology development in Cambodia. The MOU signed on behalf of the MEF, Under Secretary of State and State General for Digital Economy and Business Committee, and the ABA Bank CEO is in line with the national and regional policies and trends. Uh, the MOU is expected to promote and expand the collaboration in three areas. They consist of the sharing of knowledge, experience and training, participation in the use of digital enablers, and supporting activities and programmers financially and non-financially. 
All right, and here the event uh, was attended by MEF and ABA management and financial institutions and insurance company managers. Uh, also saw MEF Minister Dr. An Pornmaniroth, uh, present Cambodia Data Exchange member certificates to 14 members. So more adoption. Uh, you know, we are continuing to see this spread across the world. I also happen to see this, guys, another one, Fintech Air Wallets, which is another Ripple partner. Their Hong Kong division reports substantial revenue increase. So, you know, the other thing is the Ripple partners, they're clearly really, really proud. And I've noticed that. Uh, you know, we're seeing a lot of these highlighted companies that, uh, you know, partnered with Ripple maybe in 2017 or 2018. And uh, now, since the pandemic specifically, reporting their numbers uh, just to demonstrate how well they have actually done over the last few years, you know, as fintech uh, has kind of been shifting, online payments were becoming more prominent. Well, here's one from Airwallex. They're a global fintech platform and they're pleased to announce uh, that their Go Global campaign in Hong Kong, unlocking opportunities for SMEs e-commerce businesses and startups to scale and expand internationally. So they are looking to expand internationally. Airwallex Hong Kong's continued growth and development in the market is evidenced by a strong business momentum in the first quarter of 2023, uh, recording a 207% increase in gross revenue and a 142% growth in customers compared to quarter one, 2022. And here, Arnold Chan, general manager of Hong Kong and Southeast Asia Airwallex, he said the pandemic impacted, whoops, the pandemic impacted many local businesses. Restrictions on travel and in-person engagements meant that uh, many had to find a better and different way to ensure that they can continue to operate. Hong Kong was one of the fastest growing markets last year, and we are pleased to have been able to support so many local businesses with their ambitions to grow beyond borders. So uh, again, since the pandemic, obviously really uh, kind of hitting it out of the park, along with a strong customer growth and gross revenue numbers, Airwallex Hong Kong's total transaction volume also saw a 167% increase in quarter one, 2023, compared to the same period last year. About 25% of our Hong Kong customers use Airwallex as their primary business account. What this means is that more and more businesses are willing to explore alternative financial solutions that can enable more transparency, speed, and cost efficiency. Uh, this is encouraging to see as more and more companies recognize how fintech can help them better manage their financial operations and process to achieve their business goals. So great news here coming from Ripple partner Airwallex, obviously uh, seeing the growth. And, uh, you know, it's not specific to Airwallex. Again, uh, you know, all these articles that I see that involve Ripple partners, they're all kind of experiencing the same kind of growth. Uh, you know, running on DLT technology, obviously, you know, some of them were the first to kind of uh, switch over. And since the pandemic, over the pandemic, they have seen that growth. So uh, some great news there from Ripple partner Airwallex. Also happen to see this from Tony from the Thinking Crypto podcast. Guys, this is big. The U.S. court orders the SEC to respond to Coinbase's allegations within 10 days. So as you may know, Coinbase has issued the SEC with uh, some documents. Coinbase last week argued the SEC is providing insufficient regulatory guidance for U.S. companies operating in the crypto sector. Uh, that is kind of the long and the short of it. And now the court is saying this, guys. So the Third Circuit Court of Appeals said in a Wednesday filing that the SEC must file its response within 10 days. So they're not giving them that much time. Coinbase may then file a response seven days thereafter. Uh, Coinbase last week argued that the SEC is providing insufficient regulatory guidance for U.S. companies operating in the crypto sector, saying the commission must, at a minimum, must set forth how those inapt and inopposite uh, requirements are to be adapted to digital assets. Uh, the coin exchange referred to a 2022 petition asking for formal rulemaking within the digital asset sector to which the SEC is yet to respond. So they have a 10 day deadline. It's looking as though the courts are really kind of getting fed up with the lack of clarity. Uh, you know, Eleanor Turd also bringing this up. Wow. Lighting a fire under their butts. Uh, and Mark Fagel here mentioning this. Nice to see my old law firm colleagues notch a quick response. But I think a lot of people are misunderstanding the narrow scope of this action, and the SEC is still likely to file its enforcement action against Coinbase in the weeks ahead. So don't get your hopes up too quickly. Bill Morgan responding, the proceeding draws attention to some of the matters that will be ventilated in the fair notice defense Coinbase will argue in the coming SEC enforcement action. Hence, the timing of filing its petition, part of a broader legal strategy. So he's saying, you know, this is just a legal strategy. McFay here saying they were ordered to hand over the Hinman emails, how long did they take? And crypto law responding to that, that was a magistrate judge order in a discovery phase. This is a circuit court ordering a simple response to a writ of mandamus. It's like every time the judge ordered a filing deadline for items in the Ripple case, nobody just ignored them. Everyone followed them. So be careful not to collapse everything into cynical reads on every development. It's not informative for you. Crash Davis responding, I think regular non-lawyer folk are just getting frustrated at the legal system and how many times it doesn't seem legal at all. 
Crypto law responding to that, the legal system is sometimes complex, but it is sound. The judges have been fair and careful to follow the law without bias in these cases, and they are seeing the processes through properly, which is good for everyone. So I think a lot of people are wondering, you know, where is Judge Torres's head at? Uh, is she following the process as she should? And I mean, I get it that, uh, you know, people in the XRP community are probably a little fed up. Uh, you know, expecting a verdict. We still have not heard anything yet. Uh, you know, in this case just keeps getting dragged on and on and on. And I'm talking about the Ripple SEC case, not even the Coinbase case, which is uh, how we started this conversation. So, you know, it's interesting to see how this is going to play out with Coinbase and how, you know, maybe Coinbase's filings could possibly influence other crypto cases that are uh, currently before the courts right now, which would include, of course, the Ripple SEC case. Bill Morgan also mentioning this with regards to that meeting that we talked about yesterday. Paul Gruwal and Stuart Alderati, if you guys didn't catch the video I did on that, I'll link it up here in the top right hand corner. But he's saying, no, a Coinbase XRP listing will not follow that meeting. He was responding to Mac Attack XRP's tweet here, Coinbase and Ripple CLOs meet, will XRP listing follow? Bill's saying this though, why would Ripple expect Coinbase to relist XRP when in the last few weeks Ripple decided not to use XRP in Ripple's own liquidity hub service? So that's a very good point. The meeting was more likely about how Ripple could assist Coinbase in either their petition for a writ of mandamus and or its defense to an SEC enforcement action. That's what I also think was going on there. Uh, you know, maybe comparing notes. Obviously, their cases are similar in certain ways. Coinbase's different treatment of XRP, halting secondary market sales on its exchange, than any other digital asset traded on its exchange that the SEC has alleged in the lawsuits our securities will in fact continue. XRP Godfather though asking if Coinbase relists XRP, then it would create liquidity in the United States. That is when Ripple can use XRP in the liquidity hub, bro, you should know better than that. And Bill Morgan saying, you know, I'm not criticizing Ripple's decisions not to use XRP on the liquidity hub. I explained weeks ago why that decision made commercial sense. And I mean, you know, there was a lot of reasons why uh, XRP wasn't rolled out right away on Liquidity Hub. And I did another video on that when that uh, information came out. I'll see if I can find it real quick. And I'll throw it up here in the top right hand corner again. Uh, Bill goes on to say, I am criticizing the notion that Ripple in that context would be meeting with Coinbase to persuade them to resume trading XRP on its exchange. Uh, and then more responses down here. I will link this in the description of the video if you guys are interested. But I think to settle it out here, uh, Weezy at Nerd Nation Unbox posting this. So why continue to list the tokens that were considered to be a security by the SEC? I don't get it. This is Paul Gural's official response, okay? He was recently on a, uh, he was recently doing an interview. He was speaking with Ash Bennington on the latest episode of Real Vision's Crypto Daily Briefing Show. Uh, notably, Gruwal fielded some questions from crypto proponents regarding Coinbase's lawsuit against the SEC, but also addressed Crypto Eddie's question, if the court finds secondary market sales of XRP are not securities, how would that affect the listing of XRP on Coinbase? In a response, Gruwal emphasized that Coinbase always evaluates and reevaluates decisions surrounding the listing of assets on its platform. He pointed out that the exchange had to disable trading for XRP due to the lawsuit from the SEC, which started in uh, December of 2020, of course. But Garal stressed that while XRP is still subject to litigation two years later, the Coinbase team is watching out for Judge Annalisa Torres' ruling on the case. This syncs with the sentiment within the XRP community and the broader crypto scene. However, Garal noted that a positive ruling of XRP would not automatically make Coinbase relist the asset either. He remarked, however, the judge rules... Uh, or sorry, he remarked, uh, he remarked, however, the judge rules, of course, we at Coinbase uh, are going to assess her ruling and any follow on appeals and very much weigh the court's determination and any decision we might make about relisting XRP. So, you know, it's still not set in stone, even if we do get a final verdict. Uh, it's not like they will necessarily list XRP right away, but it's also not to say that they won't either. Conclusively, Gruwal noted that Coinbase remains eager to hear the final ruling from Judge Annalisa Torres to carry out these assessments before deciding if it is safe to relist XRP. So there you guys have it from Paul Gruwal himself. I guess he had to address it because the XRP community was breathing down his neck. And I wonder how the SEC is going to respond to this 10 day deadline. Things are certainly heating up as Eleanor Turret puts it while wow, lighting a fire under the butts of the SEC. So just be prudent. We are going to get meaningful crypto regulatory clarity soon. And I know these meme coins might look alluring, but just be careful. That's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.